Okay, Rabbi Sai. Good morning, everyone. We're on Daf Kuftes, Zion, Omid Aleph. We're going to see some very interesting Agadita today. The, um, there's a little point of ambiguity which we're going to try and finesse in the Agadita itself. We'll get to that in just a minute. The Mishnah, the Gemara had brought a Brisa yesterday, which had told us that before Matan Torah, before the Torah was given, anybody could bring a korban on a private bama, on a private altar, and the only, and you could bring whatever animal you wanted. You could bring a chaya, you could bring a behema, you could bring an oaf. The only restriction was that it could not be of an impure species. And we brought a pasuk from Noah that after he got off the teva, it says that he took from all of the um, kosher species to bring karbanas to Hashem. So the Gemara's question is, Umi havu temenu taharin behahi shaita. Since when were there kosher laws given at that time to distinguish between kosher and non-kosher species? How did Noah, you know, how did Noah, there, there was no Torah yet, so, so, so what's going on? Amr of Shmuel bar Nachmeni, Amr of Yonasan, me'osa shalonevda bahen avera. The words of the Gemara are problematic because what the Gemara is, is implying, at least according to the text that we have in front of us, is that only those animals who did not commit acts of cross-breeding or bestiality is what Noah brought as karbanos. But that doesn't really answer the question because that may, those may not have been the species that were identified as the, by the Torah as being kosher. So there's an alternate girsa on the, on the margin note, which is me'osan ha'asidin litaher, that Noah took animals that currently were not kosher versus non-kosher, mm-hmm. but rather that he knew that they would eventually be declared to be kosher species. So you're right, there was no Torah at that time. There were no laws about tohor, to tahara, and tuma as far as animal species, but this was an anticipation of the Torah being given. So minahavu yadi, but how did they know which animals were kosher species and which weren't? There was no Torah given yet. So the answer is, according to Rav Chista, is that Noah passed each animal, each species of animal before the Teva, and any animal that was accepted onto the Teva, I don't know, they, maybe they, it was beamed aboard or that the Ark allowed it to enter, it's not really clear how the Ark manifested that, but the, when the Ark allowed an animal to enter, that was how Noah knew that it was a kosher species. Now, we have to clarify this. All animals, even the non-kosher species, were allowed onto the Teva. So Rashi explains that what it means is, is that we know that all animals came in pairs, male and female. But the kosher animals were seven males and seven females. So that's how Noah knew. He would bring a lion and its mate, and only one lion, male lion and one female lion, were allowed onto the Teva. But then he brought a bunch of sheep, and lo and behold, the ark allowed seven male sheep and seven female sheep to enter onto the teva. So that's how Noah knew that those animals were a kosher species. That's, that's assuming that the other gears are Correct. Yeah, no, 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 I'm saying the... Gears the, in the text we have now would just be which one's committed to the or not. Yeah, but it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be reasonable, because Noah, Noah would not... It's, the Torah yeah. says that he brought from Behema Tahora. So you'd have to modify the whole taich of what behema tahora means according to the girsa that appears before us. So it's difficult to understand. Anyway, if you have an alternate, you'll let me know, Martin. No, no. Re- Rebbe Avahu, I'm just saying. Rebbe Avahu Amar Kra, v'haboim zacharu nekei v'haboim me'ilehem. Rebbe Avahu goes even further. And it's not just that Noah passed them in front of the teva, but the animals came on their own. In other words, the animals had a sixth sense. They had an instinct that they were chosen to go onto the Teva. And the ones that were non-kosher came on one male and one female, and the ones that were kosher came seven males and seven females. Omar Mar, v'hakol karvu olos. Before the Torah was given, the only type of korban that anyone could bring would be a korban ola. That was the only type of korban. And remember, there was a whole dispute whether it, the ola required hefshet vinituach or not, to be required to be flayed and dismembered. But it, but it seems from the Gemara yesterday, from the Brisa, that the only type of korban was a complete burnt offering. 
So the Gemara asks, Olos in Shlomim Lo, Vahaksiv Ayizbuchus Vachim Shlomim Lashem Parim. But how can that be? We know that at the time of Matan Torah, when the Jews were assembled at Har Sinai, Moshe sends forth the Bechoros, the youth of Bnei Yisrael, and he has them offer Karbanos, and the Torah describes them as what? Not only Olos, but also Zvachim Shlamim. So we see that at least once the Jews are chosen as the chosen people, even before the Torah is formally given, they're allowed to offer Karbanos Shlamim. So, Ela Ema Hakol Karvu Olos Ushlamin. So the Gemara says, so you have to say that before the Torah was given, permission was granted to the Jewish, to, 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 to the people, to offer Olos and Shlamin. So wait a minute. Vahatanya Avo Shlamin Lo Ki Im Olos, Olos in Shlamin Lo. But one second, there's a Brisa that says explicitly that only Olos were permitted and not Shlamin. So how, can, how does that reconcile with the Pasuk at Har Sinai? So the Gemara answer is, So the answer is that we have to make a distinction. And this is the way Rashi understands. He says, before the Jewish people were taken out of Egypt, everyone had the status of a ben Noach, even the Jewish people. And therefore, the only carbon that could be offered was a carbon ola. Once the Jewish people were taken out of Egypt and segregated as the chosen people, even before the Torah was given, Permission was granted for them to bring Olos and Shlamim, but the other nations were still not permitted to bring Shlamim. They were only permitted to bring Olos. It's after the Torah was given, then the Jewish people were allowed a full variety of Karbonos. Olos, Shlamim, Asham, Chatas, okay? And the other nations were permitted to bring Olos and Shlamim. That seems to be the way that you have to explain the Gemara. It, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I've tried to whittle it down and simplify it for you. Okay, but that's what the Gemara is saying, is that there is an opinion that Gentiles, at least before the Torah was given, were only allowed to bring Karbanos Ola. So that Brisa, which says only Olos and not Shlamim, is referring to the status of the world before the Torah was given, when everyone was a Ben Noach except at that short amount of time between when the Jewish people were taken out of Egypt and they were given the Torah, when the Jews were also permitted to not only offer Olos, but Shlomim as well. You're going to have questions on this, Gemara. So just hold on to your hat, okay? I, I, know, I know you're going to have a question. Okay, so the Gemara now says, um, and it, by the way, Avi, if you still have a question, by the time I get to the bottom of the Yomud, raise your hand again, okay? So, De Itmar. Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yossi bar Chanina Chad Amr Karvu Shlomim B'nei Noach the Chad Amr Lo Lo Karvu, and this is actually a machlok as Tanoim, whether Gentiles, people who were B'nei Noach, were they allowed to bring Shlomim or not before the Torah was given? My time at Demand Amr Karvu Shlomim B'nei Noach. Now, if you argue that they were allowed to bring Shlomim, what's your source text? The Chsei VeHevel Hevi Gamhu MiBechoros Tzono UMechel VeHen. Because it says by the first carbon that we have recorded in the Bible is the story of Hevel and Cain. What does Hevel bring? He brings from the fat of the sheep. Now that, if you read it literally, what it means is, is that he only offered the fatty part of the sheep on the altar, but the rest of the sheep he kept for himself. Now what do we call that? That's a carbon shlamim. So you see that Hevel brought a carbon shlamim. So you can't say that Bnei Noach, before the Torah was given, only offered olos when Hevel brings a shlamim. So my time of demand Amr lo karvu, dirsiv uri tzafon uboi seiman. Now, if you hold that they only brought olos, it's because you look at this pasuk in Shir Hashirim. It says, "Awaken from the north and come to the south." So how do we understand that? Tisnaer uma shema asea b'tzafon. What it means is, awaken, O you nations, who only do the avoda in the north. Now, what does that mean? It means that the korban ola is described by the Torah as being offered al yerech hatzafona, only on the northern flank of the altar. So therefore, it implies that the other nations only offered olos, and you have to come to the south, meaning come to the Melech HaMashiach, who represents the nation, 
who offers korbanos both in the north and in the south. Umar nomi haksivu mechelvehen. So now let's go back to the other to, to that to this to the to the other pasuk. What do you, if you hold that they only offered olos? What are you going to do with the pasuk by hevel? So misham nehen ditu. What it means is not that hevel offered only the fatty portions of one sheep and kept the other portions for himself, but rather what it means is is that he had a whole bunch of different sheep in his flock. Some were fatty and some were lean. So he took the fatty sheep and offered them completely as olas to Hashem. That's how you would learn the Pasuk. Like the best. The best, exactly. Umar nami haksiv uri tzafon. And what is the other man to Amr who says that they did bring shlamim? How does he interpret the Pasuk of Shir Hashirim, which implies that only they only offered northern karbanos, implying only ola? So, hahu bekibetz goliyos hu dichsiv. He says that's not talking about karbanos. That's talking about the end of days when Melech HaMashiach is going to gather or the, the winds of the north will come and blow down to the south. There'll be an ingathering of the exiles. There'll be an ingathering of the exiles and the northern wind will blow all of the Jews who have been scattered in the diaspora will bring them to the south to Eretz Yisrael. So frak the Gemara v'haksi v'yomer Moshe gamata titain biyadenu zivachim v'olos v'asinu l'Hashem elokeinu. So the Gemara now says, now you're telling me that before the Jewish people were chosen as the chosen people, everyone was a Ben Noach, including the Jews in Egypt. So how could it be that Moshe said to Paro that you, when you send us out of Egypt, you will give us olos and zivachim, burnt offerings? and the edible offerings, which implies shlamim. If the Jews were B'nai Noach when they were in Egypt, how could they be permitted to eat shlamim? So the Gemara answers, Zvachim la'achila va'olos la'hakrava. So the answer is, says the Gemara, no, that's not what Moshe meant. He didn't mean to say two different kinds of karbonos, olos and shlamim. He meant to say that you'll give us ola sacrifices and other animals for us to slaughter and eat ourselves, but not as karbonos. Now let's look at Parshas Yisro. It says that he came to his son Moshe and he offered Ola and Zvachim, which implies Ola and Shlamim. So you see that a, uh, a Gentile was permitted to bring Shlamim Karbanos to Hashem. And it sounds like it's before even Matan Torah, because if you look at the, at the sequence in the Chumash, Yisro comes when? Before Matan Torah. So the Gemara answer is, So we know there's Ein Muktam Torah. So the Gemara says, even though it's written before Matan Torah, it really happened after Matan Torah. And that's why he was justified in offering Shlomim. The Gemara says, that's all well and good if you hold that the episode of Yisro happened after Matan Torah. That's why he was justified in bringing Shlomim, but if you hold that it occurred as it's written before Matan Torah, how are you going to explain it? And how do I know that there's such a machlokas? The Itmar, B'nei Rabbi Chia v'Reb Yeshua ben Levi, Chad Omer Yisro Kodem Matan Torah Hoya, V'chad Omer Yisro Acher Matan Torah Hoya. So this is the machlokas. Did the events of Yisro happen before the giving of the Torah or after? So Laman da Omer Yisro Kodem Matan Torah Hoya, Ksover Shalalamim Hikrivu B'nei Noach. So the Gemara answer is, you'll have to say, look, we just saw Mach Lokas, whether B'nai Noach were permitted to bring Shlomim before Matan Torah. And we saw that there's one opinion that says you learned from Hevel that they did. So that opinion that says that Yisro uh, came before Matan Torah and is able to bring Shlomim is because he holds like that Manda Omer that Hevel also brought a Shlomim. Okay, that's, so that's not such a problem. Kitanai. And so where do we have this Mach Lokas in more detail? about when Yisro actually came, or what was the impetus for Yisro coming to join the Jews in the desert. It says as follows, Vayishma Yisro Kohen Yid Mijan. The famous uh, pasuk that Yisro hears, and he hears something that prompts him to come to join the Jews. Ma Shmua Shama Ubavaniskayer. What did he hear that caused him to come and convert to Judaism? Rabbi Yeshua Omer Milchemes Amolek Shama. So Rabbi Yeshua says he heard about the Amalekite war. Because 
it hap- the, the, the words are written immediately after the end of Parshas B'Shalach, and at the end of Parshas B'Shalach, it records the Amalekite war. So he was so impressed with the Jews' ability to defeat Amalek that he came. Rabbi Elazar Hamodai Omer, Matan Torah Shama Uba, Shecheshenit na Torah li Yisrael hayakolo holech misofa olam viad sofo, v'chol malchei ovdei kochavim achazasam ra'ada beheicha lehen v'amru shira. He says that he heard about the giving of the Torah. According to this opinion, of course, Yisrael comes after Matan Torah, because when the Torah was being given to the Jewish people, the sound of God's voice reverberated throughout the entire world, and all of the kings in their palaces were filled with fear, and they immediately recited a song to God. Shenemar uvehechalo kulo omer kava. That throughout God's kingdom, there